Dodgers begin a three-game series against the Nationals today, and Clayton Kershaw will take the mound tomorrow afternoon. He joins us on the program. Good morning, Clayton. How are you? Doing good. Thanks for having me, Dan. Are you keeping an eye on the Cowboys situation? Are you a, a Cowboy fan? I am a Cowboy fan, yeah. They're reporting to uh, Oxnard here on uh, next Wednesday, I think. But are you keeping an eye on what's going on with Ezekiel Elliott holding out? And, you know, you got Dak Prescott wanting a contract. I mean, are you that hardcore of a Cowboy fan? I did not know that Zeke was holding out. I have to be honest with that. I didn't know that Dak was talking about a new contract, but I didn't know Zeke was holding out. I didn't know that. But you, So you root for Matthew Stafford individually, but you root for the Cowboys as a team. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, I, I love watching Matthew play. I got to go to high school with him, obviously. And uh, it's always fun to have a, a vested interest in every team. But, yeah, Cowboys, I grew up in Dallas. That was my team. And uh, I still love watching them play. Who throws harder, you or Stafford? Well, I'll tell you this. Matthew's a way better baseball player than I was a football player. That's for sure. <laughs> um, he, he was he was really good at baseball. He could have gone to college and played for sure. Um I bet, I bet Matthew, I mean, Matthew can throw a football way better than I can throw a, a football. That's for sure. But didn't you, didn't you uh, help protect him in a fight one time in, in high school? <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, no, but yeah. I mean, so Matthew got late hit one time, um, and I was, I was kind of big and chunky and on the line. And, you know, your you quarterback gets late hit, you get a little frustrated. So uh, the next play was like a, a cut block play where it's like a short pass and, I cut off my guy, and I gave him a little sucker punch at the end, and uh, yeah, I got tossed. Really? Yeah, I got a little feisty. Got a little feisty. Okay. Okay. Did you hear from your parent? Like, what happened when you went home? Like, did you get yelled at? Uh, no, I think it was one of those things. Like, no one really saw what happened except for the rest, because it was kind of you know in the scrum of the thing. But um, you know, it was enough for me to get tossed and had to explain myself and. Um, you know, I don't think I got in too much trouble, though. I think it was okay. Last time you got into a fight, is that the last fight you were ever in, if you want to call it that? I've never been in, like, an actual, like, fist fight before. I've, you know, gotten in a few, like, you know, wrestling matches or tussles, but never, like, an actual, like, fist fight. Who's the last Dodger teammate you would want to have in the octagon? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, Puig's gone, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> you know, I think, uh, you know, Russell Martin, Russell kind of knows all that MMA stuff. Uh, but, you know, he's strong, athletic. I think Russell would be a tough one to bring down. Yeah, Kenley might be tough, too. Yeah, Kenley, I think I think I could. Yeah, I mean, he's big, obviously, so that'd be tough for sure. Wait, wait, wait. You were going to say what? You think you could? Uh, I just, I don't know. I mean, I think Russell's just like, um, you know, lower to the ground and just stocky and um, feisty. I, I don't know. I think I have a better chance against Kenley than Russell. Not saying I could take Kenley, but I think I have a better chance. He's Clayton Kershaw, the Dodgers pitcher, a three game series against the Nationals today, and uh, you take the mound tomorrow afternoon. Have you ever gone to the stadium in full uniform? No, never. Wouldn't that be fun, though? Like just drive over, get out of the car, walk in, maybe take public transportation in New York, go out to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, that's kind of little league style, you know, how you just you know, get, get in your mom's car, put your uni on. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it'd be great. What position player do you think could, did you see the Orioles and the Angels where you had a position player who came in and got the save? First time it's ever yeah. happened in baseball history. Who would be the guy that you would want position player who could actually get a save? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to toot Russell's horn again because Russell's come in a few times for us this season and he hit 90 a few times and you know everybody talks about the spin rate stuff he had like all those characteristics the spin rate and all that stuff and I mean he looked really good so I mean I'm gonna go with Russell there too yeah Russell's incredible apparently yeah, he, he does everything yeah. he, he does everything yeah. uh yeah. What, what do you make of uh, the commissioner finally coming out talking about the baseball that maybe they've made the baseball better and therefore, we have you know less drag and more guys are hitting home runs here. Uh, you know, where do you stand on all this? <laughs> better. That's a good way to put it. You made him better. That's for sure. Uh, well, I didn't want yeah, to use I, the word juice, though, Clayton. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it, it's just it's just funny to me. It really is. It's not. It really isn't that big of a deal to me because everybody's having to deal with it. And if home runs are what people want to see, and that's what's happening, like it, it's really not a big deal. If you make good pitches, you're going to get guys out. 
And uh, it's just it's just funny to me that it's such a huge deal and it's so secretive. Like, let's just come out and let's just let's just be honest. Like, it's it's not going to change anything. We're still going to play. I just it'd be awesome just to know what happened. It it would really be fun to know. But what do you think is going on? I I mean, something has to be different. I mean, just the the amount of home runs is insane. And it's obviously going up with the way the game is being played and, you know, more strikeouts, more home runs. And I get that. But this year is just incredibly, it's just so different. We went to Coors Field a few weeks ago and obviously Colorado is a little bit different in itself, but some of the home runs that were being hit in Colorado were just like, this is, this is insane. Like this isn't even baseball. Like we're playing on the moon right now. It's just crazy. (laughs) When's the last time you gave up a home run and you went that, that come on, that's not right. Uh, Let me think. I mean, I've given up plenty of home runs where, you know, it's kind of on the fence. Um, I think the one thing I'll say is guys are going opposite field. Like it's, like it's nothing. And even in Dodger Stadium, you know, Dodger Stadium is pretty fair at night. And um, you see some righties and lefties that are great hitters, you know, nothing against them. But going opposite field is like there's only a few guys in the league that used to be able to do that. And now it's like, you know, you got your seven hole hitter going oppo upper tank, you know, upper deck. And it's like, <laughs> dang, this is, this is awesome. But I saw Verlander. Verlander's given up more home runs than anybody in baseball, and he's having another incredible season. And he said, look, I'm a fly ball pitcher. I'm going to give up home runs. I'm not giving up much more than that. Uh, do you understand that logic that I can't change, even though there's something up with these baseballs? And if you, if you take me you know, out, then you take me out. Yeah, no, and I think that's a great philosophy to have, and he's right. I mean, he's having a dominant season, and those are probably the only runs that he's giving up are home runs. And um, I've always said that solo home runs aren't going to beat you. You know, if you give up, you know, one solo home run, even two solo home runs a game, like if those are the only runs you're going to give up, you're probably going to win the game. And um, he's so hard to hit that um, there's not going to be a lot of traffic on the bases. It's going to be hard for guys to string together two or three hits in an inning anyway. So um, he's, he's absolutely right. Who do you hate facing when you're at the plate? Oh, when I'm at the plate. Okay. Um, anybody that throws over 95. <laughs> so, fast. so that's pretty much the entire league, right? Uh, yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. It is. But you got one home run. I do. I need more. I, you know, I've been around too long not to have, not to have a couple more, you know, I can end up in batting practice. I can get a couple out and, um, you know, that's my favorite part of my day. It's just, it's the best, you know, there's no stress. You just get up there and get to go try to hit homers and big league ballparks. I mean, that's a blast. Did so, you get the ball back when you hit that home run? I did. I hit it in, uh, <laughs> I hit it in center field. So there's luckily no fans there. So it was awesome. Uh, what do you make of these, uh, the robotic strike zones that they're running in the, uh, the Atlantic league and, and the possibility, w- would you be in favor of, you know, the eye in the sky being the strike zone there to help out these umpires. I'm a little skeptical. Um, I just, I'm I'm a lot skeptical. I'll be honest. I just, I don't know how the strike zone works per se, because you know, the little boxes on TV, you know, everybody says that they're all different based on what, you know, cable provider or what like network you're watching. And then, um, you know, the strike zone's 3d, right? So it's, it's, how do you, how do you figure all that in? And, um, I just, I, I don't know, you know, and I, I think, you know, obviously the balls off the plate that you get called strikes are, uh, are balls. And I understand that. So hitters are really going to like that, but you know, Dan, the strike zone goes all the way up to the letters, like by the book. So when you're throwing fastballs at the letters and needless to say, how everybody throws 95 miles per hour, you cannot hit that pitch. You can't. So if that's a strike, that's going to be, that's going to be a really tough time. And, Pitchers are going to change. Pitchers are just going to try and throw the ball up there all the time now. Yeah, I I would like to see it maybe in the All-Star game where you could have dialogue during the game and and we could see it. And it's in a game and it's not spring training. The umpire could be mic'd and you could be talking about it. If you're on the mound, you could ask, you know, uh, you know what what's the strike zone or where was that and and do it in a conversational manner and we could be there to witness it and I think that might be interesting to roll it out that way just to give you a feel of what it could be like and it feels like you would benefit more if you did have a you know a true strike zone I'm guessing yeah you know I don't know and I guess you're right I guess I guess you just have to see it in action to know for sure what you're getting and um, you know, it's a good idea, I guess, to do it somewhere 
you know, spring training, all-star game, something just to know what, um, what you're dealing with. And, um, cause everybody says robotic umpire and it, it sounds great in theory, but there's gotta be, we have to try it out. And I know they're doing it in the Atlantic league and I'd be interested to see a game, you know, just to see how that's going. Yeah, I'm curious about it. I saw a special on HBO's Real Sports with Brian Gumbel, and uh, I think uh, uh, Eric Burns was the umpire, and, and he took part in this and just said, hey, you know what? There's somebody up above. There's a strike zone, and they would buzz down and say ball or strike, and they did it in real time. It wasn't like there was a great hold up there. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. But I'd be, you know, like tennis has it now, and nobody complains about any calls because they say, well, there it is right there but i think as viewers when we're watching we're never right behind you so so the strike zone is a little bit altered and then we'll go well that, that's a strike or that's a ball when if we're right behind you you're going to see a different look or the hitter or the catcher is as well yeah you know i that's all true and i, I can't argue with any of that the only thing i will say is that um you know catchers take a great deal of pride and um catching the ball and presenting the baseball to the umpire. And um, a lot of people have jobs and get paid as catchers because of how they present the baseball. And you're basically taking that art form away. And so um, the catching position changes entirely at this point, because pitch framing is a huge deal, especially for some of the new age front offices and organizations. And um, As a pitcher, you can definitely tell a difference. So, um, that that's taking jobs away right there and uh, making the catching position a lot more offensive at that point. And um, you just have to be aware of that as well. Are the kids, do they get excited uh, when you're on the mound? They're getting there. Yeah. You know, Charlie, uh, my son just loves baseball and um, it's probably my fault, but he, he does love baseball. And um, <laughs> You know, I think uh, they're kind of getting to the point where Charlie will at least watch a couple innings and, Callie will come to the field, but she's not going to watch the game. She's going to go to the family room and play with her friends. So, um, yeah, she, she uh, she's not too too into the baseball thing, but she loves to root for guys, and um, she just loves coming. It's awesome. Okay, wait a minute. You, you said it's your fault that Charlie likes baseball. Yeah, I mean, he's around it a lot. Well, know? what do you want him to like? You want him to pick up golf or <laughs> – uh, Yeah, post-retirement, I would love for him to pick up golf. That would be great. Um but no, you know, you just, as a baseball dad, you just, you don't want to be, you don't want to force it on him. And I obviously I swell with pride every time he says he wants to play catch or hit off the tee or whatever, but um, you just don't want to force it on him. You just want him to have fun and play whatever he wants. Uh, well, have fun tomorrow when you take the mound. Uh, great to catch up with you again. And uh, thanks for joining us. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks. That's uh, Clayton Kershaw, Dodgers pitcher. For more Dan Patrick Show, tune in to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV, stream for free on BR Live, or download the Dan Patrick Show app.